Hello, how are you all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're going to take a look at a 2012 Ford F-250 Super Duty. This vehicle is exhibiting a vibration about 48 to 50 miles an hour. There's already been some work done on the vehicle. The tires have been replaced and all the U-joints front and rear shafts have been done as well. We need to diagnose this car so we're going to need additional tooling. We need an NVH. What we're going to use today is the NVH by Automotive Test Solutions. It's referred to as the Intelligent Vibration Analyzer. This isn't like all the other NVHs. This is an intelligent system that uses smart sensors and one sensor is going to be placed on each corner of the suspension. Now we're going to go in with quad sensing technology and we're going to look at these sensors and we're going to be able to figure out where the vibration is being emitted by sensor triangulation. So let's go ahead and connect these sensors up and go for a test drive. Now we'll connect the IVA to the vehicle. That's going to connect to the DLC and that's going to get me the data stream from the vehicle. That's going to give me the RPM and the vehicle speed which we need in order to calculate the vibration and the frequencies. This device also has the ADC analog to digital converter or it's an oscilloscope. It's going to have each one of the vibration sensors plug into the front. This button will do recording so once we're on the road and we want to record it you push the red button and it's really easy to get the data. The device also connects to your PC and your PC will run the IVA software. The IVA software is already pre-programmed and it will go in and it will analyze these four sensors through triangulation and we'll be able to tell exactly where the vibration is coming from on this vehicle. So let's go ahead and get it connected. We need to fill in some information so the IVA can do the proper analysis. The most important thing is the tire size. This vehicle has a 285 70 17. It's on all four wheels, so we're going to let that default. It's a four wheel drive vehicle. We're using four vibration sensors on the wheel and suspension. We need to know the ring and pinion. This has a 373. However, if I didn't know the ring and pinion, I would turn on the auto find, and the auto find would find the ring and pinion during our test drive. Once the ring and pinion is known, then the system can start to do the testing. We want to check the sensors. They're all green, indicating that it sees the correct voltage and they're plugged in. Now we're going to go ahead and start the analysis. The analysis will come up and each tire is the data is given, the engine and the front and rear shafts. It also has the data that will come up on the vehicle itself and it's going to tell us which tire or shaft shaft has the vibration. On these vibrations, the hertz is what we're looking for. That's the target hertz and that's put in by the tire size and the vehicle speed. The sensed hertz is the closest hertz to what we're looking for with the highest amplitude. If these go over the threshold, these will start to color in and they will be colored in yellow for a light vibration, orange for a heavier vibration and red for a severe vibration or one you'll be able to fill quite readily. So that's it. So let's go ahead and get this out on the right road for a test drive. We've got the IVA connected. We're on a test drive in the vehicle right now and we're doing about 45 and I can feel the car shaking right now. It's got some type of a hop. It almost feels like uh, a suspension bounce with one of these big trucks when you're hitting bumps, but we're on a smooth road doing the test. As we can see right here, our numbers are very low. If any of the tires or shafts were having any type of a rotation, we would see the vibration in the 80s to 100s. Um, the vibration is sort of coming and going right now. but I can definitely feel the vibration present. But the vibration definitely isn't in any of the tires. Um, yeah, this vibration is definitely, we, we, I can feel it pretty good in the chassis, but I'm not seeing it in the tire load.
Now we've got it bouncing pretty good right there. And we can see that the tires aren't staying, but the bounce is staying. That's about 42 right there, and that's about the strongest that I felt it. We still got the car bouncing, but I do not see the vibration present. We can go over here and we can also look at these. This is the fast forward transform, and we can see that we really don't have any one tire or any big uh, event happening. Um, this vibration is not in any rotational device on this car. Uh, we want to turn around here and what we want to do is we want to run another test on this car. I want to get on the crank sensor and put a vibration sensor on the frame rail. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we pulled over on the side of the road. Let me show you what we did. I came in and I found the connector for the CKP sensor and we're on the number one coil. Now what we're going to do with this data is we're going to watch the crankshaft velocity changes. If this vibration somehow is coming through that drivetrain, it's got to slow down and speed up the crank. I have a TCC locked. That's one unit. So if we see that the crankshaft is speeding up and slowing down with the bounce, it's somehow in the drive line, then we'll do the next test. If it's not, it proves that this car is setting up a resonant frequency in the frame and suspension, and then we'll have to look at what we're going to do with that. But basically, I'm just trying to do each test, and that data is going to drive the next test. So let's go ahead and we're going to put a vibration sensor on the seat the driver's seat and then we're going to use it to monitor the vibration with against the CKP sensor. We know now that it's not a tire and it's not any rotational shaft. What we're trying to do now is just confirm that that isn't being, that somehow that drive line isn't causing this. So let's go ahead and get going. Now that we've got the oscilloscope connected to this vehicle, let me show you what we did. The first thing is we took the vibration sensor from the left front and I put it on the seat. I plugged it into the scope, so now the scope is going to read that vibration sensor. Now, what we can do here is we can come in and let me show you. The, the red is the number one ignition coil. The yellow is the crank signal. Now this signal is going to be decoded to where we can actually see the crankshaft velocity changes. If the velocity changes hop with the crank, they mirror each other in other words, the vibration sensor and the crank sensor, then we know that that is being fed back in through the drive line. We're just trying to make sure this isn't a drive line problem. Now well, the thing I can see right away is that this is going to be a really small signal so I want to make it bigger. I'm going to put ECOP on three, that's where you just click on the range and we pick ECOP and then the next thing I want to do is I want to make this bigger. It's times two right now. I want it 30, so I'm going to make it 30 times bigger. So now we're times 30, so this signal is going to be much larger than, than anything. That means it will be easier to compare this to the crank changes to see if they're following each other and they're not. Um, that being said, we're going to get started here and let's go drive this thing and see what we get. We're back out on the highway. I've got the hop going. I really don't see anything on the IEA that shows me I've got a vibration, but I've got a little bit of vibration that's going on in the vehicle. We definitely got it, so let's go ahead and we're going to stop the scope. And now we want to look at that data. So let's go ahead and pull over where we can safely look at this data. Now we've collected the data from the scope and we're at a place where we can actually analyze this data. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. So the first thing we're going to get our zoom window. We want to come down here and we want to look at the crank. So this is the crank right here. 
Now, right in this format, this is going to be really hard to say if the crank is speeding up or slowing down. We need to run an algorithm on this to do that. Let's go back out. We're going to shut the ignition coil off. And what I'm interested in is coming right in here and looking at this hop. So right in here, these are our hops, or the vibration. Let's go ahead and see what we've got here. So we're going to go from this one to this one right here. We're about 9 hertz. So let's go and see if we, we repeat that. We got about 8 hertz. So 8 hertz is about the tire rotational speed. But we know it's not a tire because we have a sensor on every corner of the car and the tires aren't vibrating. So this isn't the tire, but as the tires vibrate, it's setting up a resonant frequency into the suspension in the frame and then it starts to make this thing go up and down. The one thing I want to be sure of is that the crank isn't mirroring this. If it's going through the drive line with the TCC locked up, the crank is going to slow down and speed up. In order to process this, is what we need to do is come over here. We want to turn off all these other channels and we only want to process channel one. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn the crank into a frequency base. So now we want to move the channel three up. Get our zoom window here. Let's see if we can't get this a little lower. Now is what we want to do is we want to come in and we want to compare these. Now what we're looking for is the bounce to be resonating in the crankshaft. And we can see some of this crank isn't really slowing down a whole lot. We can see a couple of places here where it might be more apparent that that's happening. We got a bounce, but we really didn't have anything where the crank slowed down and sped up here. Again, this is more orientated to where that happened, but overall, I'm not really seeing that. Let's go back out. Let's come back in with the zoom. Take another look. It's somewhat following it, but I believe it's what's happening is the resonance is setting up in the chassis and the chassis is pushing down and it's loading the tires which somewhat loads the drivetrain. But if the if this bounce was really coming from the the drivetrain slowing down and speeding up, this crankshaft would be slowing down and speeding up and it would mirror it and it would be at a frequency of 8 hertz and I just don't see that. So I don't think this is in the drivetrain and I know no rotational speed is causing it because we have sensors all over the car. So now is what we need to do is let's go and look, get online and look up some data. Let's see if we can find a TSB for this vehicle. Okay guys, we did some research and we found a TSB on this from Ford. Ford has made a vibration dampener that goes on the very back of the vehicle on the trailer hitch. And this thing, when I saw the TSB, I didn't realize how cool it'd be. This is one cool piece, guys. This is a big, heavy weight. And do you see how it's moving in here? Do you see how easily that rotates? So what happens is when the car starts to move up and down, this counters that and it stops the resonant frequency from getting into the frame and then starting to create a bounce in the suspension. So we're going to go ahead and put this piece on the car and then we're going to go take it for a test drive. Now we've got the vibration dampener mounted off of the rear hitch. You can see how it's going to work. Let's go for a test drive and see if it's going to fix this vehicle. Okay, so we've got the vibration dampener on the car and we're back out on the same stretch of road where we've repeatedly gotten this vehicle to exhibit this problem. Um, 
At this time, it seems really good. It's not repeating the vibration. One of the things that was really interesting was when we drove out here on a highway, we were doing 70 every time we've come out going fast. This car exhibited a lot of uh, suspension hop or bounce, like all these big trucks do. You know, you get, the, you get them in the right rhythm where there's the cuts in the concrete across the highway. It would really start to get some uh, dolphining going. I was really surprised at how much better it did at high speed. Now that's not why we put it on the vehicle, but it sure fixed that, and that isn't what I expected it to do. I expected it to fix the vibration, you know, at about 48. That's what the shop we're working on this car wants. They want the car fixed at about 45 to 50, where the vibration is most apparent. Um, at this time, we're doing 48, 50. It's virtually gone. Now we need to drive up and down this stretch several times to make sure that it doesn't come back, right? But at this time, it's doing really well. Uh, we're gonna do a few laps on this and we'll see you back at the shop. So we just got off of the test drive in this F-250. Um, we went to a section of road where we could repeatedly get this car to have the vibration. I would really call the vibration more of a suspension hop. It almost feels like one of these big, you know, F-250, F-350s do when you're going down the freeway and you're hitting a rough road and it starts to sort of dolphin and the suspension gets some bounce to it. Except the road is smooth and I'm only at 42 to 50 miles an hour for this to be present. When we went out, I'm not going to tell you that this vehicle is 100% repaired, but it's 80% better. So you can still feel it sort of start, but the dampener stops it from getting into the resonant frequency where the body starts to hop. It's a pretty cool dampener. One of the better mechanical devices I've seen. Ford did a really good job in designing it because it did fix this truck. The most important thing is, is we use the intelligent vibration analyzer on this truck with quad sensing. That means we have a vibration sensor on each point of the suspension on all the corners. So we could easily see what is vibrating or more importantly on this vehicle, what's not vibrating. There was no mass vibration from the engine, drivetrain, shafts, or the wheels. So we're not gonna put those pieces on because we know that's not what's gonna fix the car. When we started to look further, we could see that these, the frame and the suspension set up a resident frequency. We came back, we did some homework, we found out about the dampener, we ordered it in, got it on the car, and the truck is fixed. If you guys are gonna do vibrations, you really need to invest in a high-tech device, not something where we hang parts and see if the vibration goes away or not, but something that tells us where the vibration is coming from. That's the IVA. You guys have good diagnostics in your bay. Have a great day.